the split light technique, probably one of the most popular techniques. And today I'm gonna to give you seven tips that you probably haven't seen before. Welcome back to the channel, my name's Rich, my wife and I do a lot of cool, well, YouTube stuff, everything along our photographic film journey, us as just, you know, people getting out there trying to do YouTube, so we'd appreciate a like, subscribe and a comment below. We're going to get into the studio and run you through seven tips in a, call it off the cuff, kind of video. Let's go. So first things first, this is a Forza 60B softbox, there's no grid on it. You can see there's quite a bit of spill coming onto the background on this side. So yeah, take a photo. Alright, now I'm going to throw the, whatever you want to call it, honeycomb grid, grid snoot on you. And as I put it on, you're going to see from the angle how the background is going to start getting darker. This is just because we are taking the same amount of light, but we're only directing it where we want to go. And because we're not changing the size of the light source, the softness stays the same, almost. So it will take some light away, so you may need to up the power or lift the exposure. All right, Michelle, take a photo. Okay. It's very dark now. Pretty dark, mm -hmm. okay. So I'm gonna lift the brightness up of this. It's on 29% currently. I'm gonna take it up to 37%. Go again. So the goal in doing something like this is to kind of shoot for your highlights. So don't overexpose your highlights. Otherwise, if it blows out, the highlights are the subject of the photo rather than the shaded area. So don't try and expose for the shading as well. Let me show you what I mean. So this is shutter speed 200, f3.5, ISO 1250. If I take my shutter speed all the way down to 60th, I introduce more shadow on the other side of her face, but you also overexpose the highlights. Michelle's going to take a couple of photos quick of Dominique that will fill in for you guys and you guys can have a look. Um, and I'll get some cool little B-roll snippets and you can carry on watching a BTS from here. And then I'll put the NAND lights on and show you what you can do with the second or third light. That's actually really nice too. Like So one thing that I'd highly recommend for you to tell your model if you're doing something like this is kind of explain to them about the lighting. And the reason for that is shading plays a very crucial part. So like one of the things that Michelle said is when you put your hand by your face, don't push it too hard. This is due to the fact that you're going to create unwanted shadows because the shadows are going to look a little bit harsher than they usually do because you're playing with lights and darks. One of the things you can do in a shot like this is just by having your model move her face, you can change the, the look completely. So right now she's looking at me, so the light's catching her from this side and it's creating that split light. So Dominique, just look straight into the light and now you can see the look that you get is totally different. When you move the light, too, be too far behind the subject or too far in front of the subject. So this is not your normal lighting where you'd bring it down from your Rembrandt lighting from like this side. You don't do that. So instead of doing something, you know, like this, which is standard Rembrandt lighting, you'd bring it around to split lighting. However, if you go too far back, you create a very harsh line, which you can see from this angle, you know, along the nose, which looks amazing. Um, but if you go too far back, you start creating shading on the cheek. Uh, which isn't ideal and if you come too far forward you eventually get some spill going over to the opposite cheek as you can see over here so you kind of have to find this happy medium just play with it um, and one thing that is really important really really important is always try and shoot at like a lowish ISO this is just helps with your dynamic range when you're playing in post with a sensor I'm going to introduce another light over here. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you what hair light is. And a lot of times hair light isn't often used in these kind of shots. As you can see now, you've got no hair light coming over here. And if I did this, you'd have a little bit of a kicker light. 
The problem is it creates a very odd look due to the fact that you've only lit up one side of her face and you've got like this random hairline. So it looks like the out outline of her head is here, but the rest isn't there. Not something you wanna do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna gel the background. Um, and because obviously when you do these kind of shots, you black out the background, you can't use colored paper. Check how dodgy I look there behind you over your shoulder. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we're going to put on one of the Nanlite Pavo tubes over here and then you've got that pretty cool look. Right, so this is going to glow a lot more than it is in the photos just due to the fact that you know video is shot at a much lower shutter speed and your ISO is quite high. So that's kind of the look that you get. So we'll grab a couple of photos. On this angle it looks pretty cool, not going to lie. <laughs> Pretty rad. When you play with this, uh, her hands and everything, accessories are quite tough with split light. Do you want just, the bow in the back or the front? Uh, the front's fine. And then just turn it a bit sideways for me. If you do something like this with this type of lighting with the gel in the background, with hats it is kind of a bit weird because you do have this section coming out of here, which looks a bit odd. So I'm going to switch the backlight off. And then, boom. Now, when you shoot the shot, you've got a totally kind of different vibe, which looks pretty cool. I'm gonna put the backlight on. I'm gonna set it really dim, just to add a little bit of a low down kick to separate. Oh, oh, hard for me, but like yeah. more, yeah, and like literally pull it towards your face. So if you're ever going for like some form of editorial fashion mag cover, this is generally the look that you'd go okay, for. A bit down. There we go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a third light. Okay. So I'm gonna show you what happens from this angle, so light number one, light number two, and then we're gonna do light number three. Now light number three, you can kind of gel to a different color. Obviously right now I'm getting quite a bit of spill onto the background as you can see, and if I take that away and I just put it on her, you can see how that looks. If I change this to a bit of a white light, uh, this will give you more of like a rim light kind of effect rather than a color gel effect, which does look very cool, but this is changing the complete idea of a proper spit, spit light. <laughs> of a split light into something a little bit more artistic. So what we're gonna rather do is we are gonna play with some colors and do something like that. Or if you're getting spill onto your background and you're in a tight space and you don't have the luxury of that, you have the Nanlite egg crate. It literally looks like an egg crate, creating a very similar effect to the grid, like on the softbox. Now, you'll see it, no matter how bright I go or where I want to position it, I don't have to worry about the spill hitting the background. If you want the model to look at the light and then lift your hat up this side just so we can see your face a bit. There we go. So if you had to take a photo right now, you don't have a lot of shading on her nose, which obviously isn't ideal because it looks very flat from that angle. So it, the, I would accentuate that flatness by moving the light too straight on, you know, which is very similar to your normal straight on light. But as soon as you bring the light around more and you wrap it around her face and you get that shading on the nose, you also create a lot of other shading, so you get that more three-dimensional look. Her collarbones stand out more. It just looks a lot more like dramatic and 
pretty cool. So that's it from us. I hope you learned something. And if you did, comment below. Let us know what you thought. Last time we did a video, last time we did a video similar to this with some like sneaker B-roll, you absolutely loved it. So that's it. Wherever you are in the world, have a good day, good evening, good night. Goodbye. She's got a nice neck for this. <laughs> You've got a great neck. <laughs>